Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the No More Excuses Voting Rights Rally Now. My name is Alma Puberti. I'm the National Organizing Director for the League of Women Voters. Before we begin, I want just to explain a few logistic and safety precautions. We are here to demonstrate and to exercise our First Amendment, but we are here doing it in the safest way possible. You can see around you, you're gonna see marshals with their yellow vests on. They are here with us to ensure our safety and that we can enjoy this moment. So make sure that you're paying attention to their cues. They're gonna be reminding you to stay socially distanced, body apart. They are also have sanitizer with them in case you need it. Our purpose is that we come here, we demonstrate, we protest, and then we go back home to our families. And it is on all of us to take care of each other. So with that, we're gonna start the program with a practice. What's going on everybody? Make some noise, make some noise, make some noise. Put your hands together, put your hands together. Make some noise if you're excited to be here. We're here in front of the White House with a very important message, right? We're here for voting rights. So we want to make sure that before we get the action started, we are speaking with one voice, one clear message. And just to introduce myself, because I just jumped right in, my name is Gabby Roque, and I am the lead organizer with CASA. And I'm Marcus Bachelor. I'm Deputy Director of Leadership Programs at People for the American Way. Are you guys ready to start chanting? Yeah. All right, so we're going to make this pretty easy for you. So you need to remember these. These are ones we're going to use throughout today's activities. But we want you to just get a little practice, get a little energized before we get started. So the first chant, we'll say, what do you want? What do we want? You'll say voting rights. I'll say, when do we want it? And you'll say, now. All right. What do we want? Voting rights. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Voting rights. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Voting rights. When do we want it? Now. Good, good. I like that. I like that energy. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So the next one we're going to do uh, is uh, DC. We're going to do free DC statehood now. So I'll say free DC, and you'll say, Wait, I'll say free. I'm from DC, y'all. Come on now. You, I'll say free DC, and you'll say. Say her now. You'll say. Say her now. Free DC. Say her now. Free DC. Say her now. Free DC. Say her now. Awesome, awesome. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Gabby, you want to lead this one? We can, we can just switch. All right. Now we're gonna get a little bilingual here. We're gonna say. Que queremos justicia. So que queremos is what do we want and justicia is justice. All right. So I'm going to say que queremos and you guys will say justicia. Que queremos justicia. Que queremos justicia. Que queremos justicia. And now there's a second part where we say cuando, which means when, and you guys are going to respond in Spanish, ahora. So when I say cuando, you're going to say, ahora. Que queremos justicia. Cuando, ahora. Cuando, cuando, cuando. Ahora, ahora, ahora. Awesome, you guys are officially bilingual. <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. All right, we're gonna do we're gonna do one, and we're here at the White House for a very specific reason, because the president has said that voting rights are the most important test of our time, but we need him to act like it, and so we're gonna use his words here in the park today. So when we say when we say voting rights, you'll say are the test of our time. Voting rights 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 are the test of our time. Love it, love it, love it. All right, we've got one more. Let's let's get another statehood one in here. When I say statehood for DC, you guys say is voting rights for DC. Statehood for DC. 
knows how to get things done. And that is why we are here today at the White House because it is time for President Biden to live up to his promise to make voting rights a priority of this administration. And we will not stop. Today is just one day of many, and we will not stop. We will keep our foot on the backs of these politicians to hold them accountable for our voting rights. And we are here to send a message, Mr. President, you have the power to bring lawmakers together from both sides of the aisle and ensure that these voting rights bills become law. The filibuster is only a barrier if you allow it to be. Now is the time. The American people are counting on you, Mr. President, and we are holding you accountable. So we have a great program here today. We are so thrilled. We have amazing individuals, but we want to start with a blessing because we all know whether you are a person of faith or not, we need to make sure that we are calling upon our higher powers to put their hands over this crowd to keep us safe and to make sure that our mission can be accomplished. So with that, I want to bring up Rabbi Jonah Pesmer and Reverend Tim McDonald to bless the crowd. Good afternoon, civil rights family. Good afternoon, voting rights family. Pastor McDonald and I are here and want to remind everybody what happened on January 6th. A white supremacist, racist mob of anti-Semitic and anti-Muslim bigots invaded our nation's capital because some people want some people's votes not to count. Some people want white supremacy to stay in power and control of this country after 400 years of enslaved African people, slavery, Jim Crow, mass incarceration, and yes, voter suppression. But something else happened on January 6th. You cannot make this stuff up. A white Jewish kid who grew up in Atlanta, who was bar mitzvah at the temple, which was the site of the bombing by the Ku Klux Klan because the rabbi Rothschild marched with King and was a civil rights leader, was elected the first Jewish senator from the state of Georgia alongside pastor Reverend Warnock, who was the pastor at King's Church, which was the sister church to the temple in Atlanta, becoming the first black senator in the state of Georgia. So on this day and offering a blessing on this crowd, I invoke the names of Goodman and Cheney and Schwerner, two young white Jewish men and a young black Christian man who gave their lives for the right to vote. And we are now a much broader, multiracial, multireligious, multiethnic democracy in America, where in the face of some people not wanting some people's votes to count, we say black, white, brown, Asian, Latino, immigrant, we say Muslim, Christian, Jew, Baha'i, Hindu, friends, people of all faith, people of no faith. We stand together in the acknowledgement that our safety is in our solidarity and the redemption of this nation built on hundreds of years of systemic racism. The redemption of this nation might come through our democracy. Voting rights now, amen. Thank you so much, Rabbi. I'm Reverend Timothy McDonald, Vice Chair of the Board of People for the American Way. I had the privilege at the age of 23 of serving as the full-time assistant pastor of the historic Ebenezer Baptist Church, where Daddy King served then as pastor emeritus. Dr. Joseph Roberts was a senior pastor, and I served for six years with Daddy King and Dr. Roberts as the assistant pastor. I had the privilege of serving with the Southern Christian Leadership Conference on the national staff with Dr. Joseph Lowry. Why do I say this? This fight is not a new fight. This fight for voting rights has been going on for far too long. 
but we knew then as we know now. We are not here for an event. We are here to continue a movement. And this movement will not cease until voting rights becomes a priority for our house. This house behind us that we call the White House, this is our house, built by slaves. And we're going to make sure that the occupant of this our house understands that we are here for the marathon race, that we are here for the long haul, and that we are not going to give up, we're not going to turn back, we're not going to throw in the tower, but we're going to fight until every voter's vote gets counted. I don't care if it's white or black or brown, whether it's Republican or Democrat. We are here to protect democracy. We are here to protect the right of every American citizen to know that when I cast a ballot, that my ballot will be counted. It is time for President Biden to do the right thing and fix the filibuster. Let the filibuster work for the voters. Let the filibuster work for our democracy. Let the filibuster work for the people, not for special interest groups, not for the money group, but for the citizens of these United States of America. I am so proud that our country is striving to help out in Afghanistan. That is a good thing. But Mr. President, we got problems right here that need to be fixed. The vote in America needs to be fixed. Democracy in America needs to be fixed to move our nation forward, to regain our self-respect. We must make sure that we stop these voting suppression bills. The last thing I would say, I'm from Georgia. The first voter suppression bill that passed in the United States of America came through Georgia. Dr. King was from Georgia. John Lewis served as our congressman from Georgia. Joseph Lowry served as the head of the SCLC in Georgia. We need to send a message. And I want to thank you for being here today because they're going to hear us in our house. They're going to hear us today. They're going to hear us they're going to feel us, and it won't be just a one-day event. We will come back again and again and again until justice rolls down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream because we ain't going to let nobody turn us back now. We've been out here too long. It's too hot out here. We've been fighting and fighting, and now we want resolution. Fix, fix America. Fix democracy fix our vote and let's do it now to save our democracy to save the image that our country is perpetuating all around the world this is our house and we want our house back this is our house and we want our house back this is our house and we want and we will take our house back god bless you god keep you be strong and let's keep on fighting well, good afternoon. good afternoon. My name is Ben Jealous, I'm president of People for the American Way. It was an honor to be joined by Rabbi Pesner and our co chair, Reverend Tim McDonald. I want to thank each of you for joining us today in the midst of all these COVID anxieties as I wipe this microphone. And I want to thank the, uh, the League of Women Voters who's serious about COVID protocol, y'all. And, uh, and I want to thank the tens of thousands who are watching us live stream right now. And the more than 400,000 who signed the petitions that we delivered to the White House two weeks ago. The White House knows what this is about. This is a moment when this movement is escalating because we have pleaded, we have asked politely, 
and we receive no joy as we've watched voting rights bills introduced states across the country and go down and voter suppression bills introduced in states across the country and passed. We now see Arizona and Texas and Georgia giving corrupt politicians the ability to overturn the people. The people didn't give the politicians that power, the politicians gave themselves that power. Madison, who led the arrests after arrests after arrests at the South African Embassy in the 80s. Joe Madison, who is a powerful voice for DC statehood right now. Joe Madison. I've been in some of the uh, best jails in America. <laughs> and civil disobedience tool that's used and you'll find it very interesting in the two minutes that I have. When the Ben Jealous or Dick Gregory or any of you go to jail, you obviously will be joined by a lot of brothers and some sisters that are already there. And when they see you, they ask, what are you here for? What did you do? You now have an opportunity to educate those who are locked up and who won't be locked up forever and they'll be coming out. Today, for example, in North Carolina, ex-felons now have the right to vote. Yay! I've only stopped by because one, my respect for Ben Jealous my respect for those who spoke before. Reverend Minchin, Reverend Minchin, Joe Lara, Martin Luther King, John Lewis, Rosa Parks. The one thing they all have in common is they're no longer with us. They've passed on the torch. But what I'm so delighted to see today is a multi-generation from the very youngest under the tree to some of us old heads, gray hairs, and I'm sorry, Ben, no hair. <laughs> but I have come by to tell you, none of us can afford now to pass the torch. And so I'm here to tell you, I'm not passing my torch. I'll light your torch. All right. I will light your torch, because if I pass my torch, I'm in the dark. I'll light your torch so that we all can have the light going forward uh, together. And I would also say this in closing. Don't make this a moment. What you are part of is a movement. And the difference between a moment and a movement is sacrifice. If you think it's hot now, we ought to make sure it's damn hotter on the United States Senate and that they pass that John Lewis Voting Rights Act. Biden, he owes that to us. His ass would not be sitting in that White House if it wasn't for those of you out here and the millions others who voted for him. And it's time for him to pay. It is time for him to pay up. The filibuster is not in the Constitution of the United States law uh, Constitution. It's made up. Right. Yeah. Fix it. And they can change it tomorrow. Yeah. If they can change the filibuster rule to make sure that we can pay for airplanes, and the federal budget, then they ought to make sure that they change that filibuster to take care of the most fundamental constitutional right every single one of us has in the United States, and that's the right to vote. Yes. Be prepared to make this moment a movement. God bless you.
to drown out the voices of those least represented in our democracy. When one person, let me say that again, when one person is disenfranchised, our entire democracy is weakened. That's right. Right. Yes. And speak, speaking of those least represented, our call for democracy reform must absolutely, positively include statehood for the District of Columbia. Residents of our nation's capital have been subject to taxation without representation for our country's entire existence. This is shameful. We cannot call ourselves a great democracy until all our people have full and equal representation in our government. The president must not leave the people of D.C. behind. It is time that the White House truly shows us that voting rights is a priority. This is about the soul of our nation. Mr. President, we hope the people, we the people will not accept words any longer. Mr. President, hear our voices, hear our cry. Mr. President, we demand voting rights now. Deborah Ann Turner, Virginia K. Solomon, 
Ben Jealous, and the incredible team at the League of Women Voters and People for, for bringing us all together here. My name is Charlie Carter. I'm the Executive Director of the Democracy Initiative. We're a unique intersectional coalition of 75 labor organizations, environmental organizations, civic groups, civil rights groups, civil rights groups, people who don't ordinarily share the same room or the same, same table. But we are united in understanding the right to vote and the need to perfect, protect the right to vote. Yeah. I'm here to tell you that we're with you, all 45 million of us. Woo! We're in this fight to protect our right to vote, we're mobilizing with our affiliates in all 50 states, from Arizona to West Virginia. I want to give a special shout out to Penny Sheeran and the delegation from Arizona League of Women Voters. They, along with the Democracy Initiative and a broad coalition, have turned the heat on their senators to support For the People Act. In fact, they turned up the heat so high that Senator Mark Kelly and Senator Kristen Sinema are avoiding their constituents during this recess. <laughs> Arizona, we got your back, and we're not backing down. There are so many great leaders here, and great organizations here today. I want to give another shout out to our friends at Black Voters Matter. Right. And it's appropriate that we're here today because if there's one person in America who should really understand that Black Votes Matter, it's the guy who lives in the house across the street, Joe Biden. If it weren't for black voters, and brown voters, and young voters, and disabled voters, and women voters, Joe Biden wouldn't be in the White House today. We showed up for Joe Biden, and now it's time for him to show up for us. Our message today is no more excuses. The filibuster is not an excuse. The big, bad Republicans is not an excuse. Democrats control the White House, the Senate, and the House of Representatives. Now is the time to take action on the central issue of our democracy. The reason that we are called the superpower, a right to vote. We can't have the moral authority to enforce and grow democracy around the world and then have other, call, other countries demanding the United Nations investigate elections right here on our soil. Right. Now is the time to center this discussion on the rights of voters, not the, pri the privileges of the entrenched politicians. I wanna go back in history because almost to this day, in 1965, Lyndon Johnson negotiated. He twisted arms, he threatened, cajoled, and did whatever needed to happen in order to ensure the passage of the Voting Rights Act. That's right. Like President Biden, he was faced with bitter opposition and procedural obstacles that seemed impossible to overcome. Unlike President Biden, at least so far, Lyndon Johnson did not let these hurdles stand in the way of standing up for voting rights for all Americans. This, this moment is President Biden's Lyndon Johnson Voting Rights Act moment. History, history will not be kind if he fails to show leadership. It's clear to everyone that we're not going to get this done unless we fix or nix the filibuster. As a 36-year veteran of the Senate, President Biden has the experience, 
and the moral authority to stand up and tell the nation this Jim Crow era rule has got to go. The filibuster creates gridlock. He ought to know. He was there for eight years and the filibuster frustrates nearly every agenda item he has. It allows a minority to overrule the majority and ignore the will of the voters. It's not part of the Constitution. You just heard that. Once we get fix or nix the filibuster, we know there is a majority in both houses of Congress for voting rights. I'm sorry, Mr. President, but the answer is not to out-organize voter suppression. We did that in November when we put him here. You can't out-organize after all the rules of our written and brand new Jim Crow structures are in place to suppress our votes. The answer is to organize now, to fix or nix the filibuster, and to honor the voters who put you in office in the first place. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you for coming out. We're here with you day in, day out. We're not going to let up until every person's Vote is protected. Thank you. No more excuses. 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 Sisters and brothers, it's first of all, let's hear it for Charlie Carter at the Democracy Initiative. They married together the Green Movement and the Union Movement and the Civil Rights Movement. It's good to know that the environmentalists understand that without the black and brown vote, there is no green vote. That's right. And now I want to bring up one of the greatest civil rights lawyers in our country, Damon Hewitt of the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights. Damon. Thank you, Brother Ben. To my brothers and sisters at PFO, where you at? Legal Women Voters, where you at? Brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you today that you have been told some myths and you are being fed some lies. It's time for us to talk about some truth telling. First myth and lie. You're being told that all of these bills and state houses around the country are designed to preserve the integrity, the sanctity of the vote. Nothing can be further from the truth. We know it's Jim Crow 2.0 because they make it hard to vote, as hard as possible. They target black and brown people. They criminalize regular behavior, like helping people get water and stand in those lines that are longer than they ever need to be. And then they tell you and lie to you and tell you it's for your own good. That's a myth. That's a lie. We're being told, well, these provisions aren't racist, it's just partisan. The Supreme Court said it's okay, and it's just politics as usual. That's a myth, then that's a lie. Because you can call it partisan, but when it's on the backs of black and brown people and black and brown communities, that is racism. Pure and simple. You're being told the myth that well, there's a party apparatus and we can campaign and, and organize around it and it doesn't matter. That's a myth, and that's a lie. Because that means you're being taken for granted not just your vote, but your voice and your vitality, your life being taken for granted. And there's another myth that's near and dear to my heart because I'm a lawyer and as Ben Jenner said, the Lawyers Committee, we got some bad lawyers. We litigated over 50 voting rights lawsuits last year alone. That's one for every state in the union. And yes, we did litigate in Alaska, in California. All over, the, all over the state, all over the continent of the U.S. and beyond. But the myth is, well, we have legal apparatus and that's enough to litigate our way out of it. Let me tell you, I'm proud of our lawyers, I'm proud of what we accomplished, but we cannot litigate our way out of this mess. Yes. We need yes. federal legislation. Yes. We need it not just to stop bad things from happening, but we need it to help good things happen. Yes. We need legislation not just to stop the dream from being swatted. We need legislation to make the elusive promise of democracy real. Yes. Yes. To make it real for you and for you. 
and for my mom, and for my cousins, and for your sister, and for your brother, for everybody. Because if it's not real for all of us, it's not real for anyone. Now there's one more, there's two more myths. One is that the hollow traditions of the Senate are here to protect us and keep us safe and keep things orderly. They're here to keep things racist. The filibuster has racist roots and racist traditions. As our dear president used to often say, anyone who says the filibuster is our friend, that's malarkey. Say, President Biden, that's malarkey. Malarkey. That's his word, not mine. All right. There's a, there's a final myth. A myth is that we're out here wasting our time, that we've been out for protests every week almost for the last six, seven, eight weeks, that it's just a few of us, that nobody hears us, that it doesn't matter, that the fate is sealed, that the Senate is what it is, the Senate's gonna do what it's gonna do. The myth, the lie is that we can't make a difference. I say we can move mountains because we always have. If you believe we can move mountains, let me hear your voice. Shout out! But here's what it's going to take, folks. It's going to take for us to move on all cylinders. We move in the courts. We move in Congress. We also have to move in communities. And I don't mean just here in D.C. Talking about D.C. statehood or the nation's capital. I mean everywhere. We know this weekend there's going to be actions all throughout the country commemorating and marking the anniversary of the March on Washington, which we're all now calling the March on Voting Rights. There's multiple actions. It's not just under one umbre umbrella. It's many umbrellas. The key for us is, can we sustain? Can we come together? Can we stay together? And we keep, can we keep fighting until we actually see the day when we move that mountain together? I think we can do it. I know we can do it. I'm proud to stand with you. Thank you. Step up, Joe! Come on, Joe! What side are you on, my people? What side are you on? Freedom side. What side are you on, my people? What side are you on? What side are you on, my people? What side are you on? On the freedom side. President Biden said that voting rights were the test of our time. We're using his words against him today. And for the folks in the shade, y'all got to be twice as loud. Pay it forward. Thank you. So when I say voting rights, say it's the test of our time. Voting rights is 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 the test of our time. Now look, we we not that far from the Oval Office. I need him to be disrupted at work real quick, y'all. Voting rights is the test of our time. Voting rights is the test of our time. Voting rights is the test of our time. Amen, amen, Virginia, Virginia. No, it's good. I'm just trying to see what you've got. Que queremos! Que justicia!
2020 election delivered pro-democracy majorities in the House, the Senate, and the White House, extremist politicians in states across the country have introduced more than 400 anti-voter laws, many of which specifically target black voters and other voters of color. And right now, these same extremist politicians are begin beginning to draw congressional maps to pick their voters for the right. next decade, disenfranchising countless Americans in the process. <laughs> President Biden and the Senate have the power to fix this, but we are running out of time. The Thank Biden you. administration promised to protect our freedom to vote, but we have yet to see the White House use the full power of the executive branch to get this done. We saw the White House bring lawmakers together to pass the infrastructure bill, but the administration has not made the same effort to protect our sacred right to vote. And that's why we're here today. Our democracy is facing the biggest threat of our lifetime. And President Biden must let nothing stand in the way of protecting our freedom to vote and ensuring fair elections. Both the For the People Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act are our best tools to stop the crisis unfolding in state legislators, legislatures across the country. The For the People Act would protect the freedom to vote, knock down the anti-voter laws that have been passed around the country, stop partisan gerrymandering, yes. and get big money out of politics. Yes! yes. Woo! Woo! And the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act would restore and strengthen our freedom to vote by making sure that any changes to voting rules that could discriminate against voters based on our race or our background are federally reviewed so that we all have an equal say in our future and our rights are protected. So the Senate and President Biden must return to work and deliver the For the People Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act to create national standards to ensure that we can safely and freely cast our ballots, have our voices heard, and elect leaders that actually deliver on their promises. That's right. Both of these bills together are necessary to restore and to protect the freedom to vote. So I'm going to speak directly to the president right now. President Biden. We're here today to say, step up, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. And now, you know, one of the organizations that's really captured the public imagination in this moment is Black Voters Matter. The co-founder, Latasha Brown, is here. about legislation, it is about the spirit of the movement, which is really about the spirit 
spirit of humanity. You've got to touch something deep in you that as you look around, look around you. Every single human being deserves to be respected and honored. Every human being has the right that as a person, shouldn't I have the right to make a decision on policy that impacts me and my family? We've got to think in those terms, you all. What I know for sure, that I am the product of those that believe. What I know for sure is that I stand here and the League of Women stand here, because let's, let's be honest, in this country, women were denied the right to vote. Black people and brown people, indigenous people, and also white men, if you didn't have any land, you were denied the right to vote. Amen. And so what we're saying is we're turning, we're going to a new level. It is no longer acceptable. We're not going to beg somebody for our rights. You're going to get it together or you're going to get out the way. And we want to be consistent around this nation spent $1 trillion on a 20-year war, supposedly in the name of democracy. So why the hell do we have to be out here in the sun fighting for something as basic as voting rights? So in that spirit, I'm gonna leave you with something because I want you to take a moment and know that love always wins, y'all. Yes. That love always wins. We have to love each other. We have to really change this nation. And those that love the truth will stand in the truth. They will fight for the truth. We will create and continue until we actually have the nation that we all deserve. Right, that what is in the Constitution, that all men and women are created equal and endowed by their creator. How many of y'all believe it? We gotta make it be so. So as I leave you, I wanna leave you with something because I am from a little city called Selma, Alabama. Anybody heard of Selma? And there were people in Selma, Alabama that didn't have money, that didn't have politics on their side, they had a belief in their humanity that if I stand in a space of love and my humanity, that I can change the world. And they did, which is why we're here now. And so in that space and in that spirit, I'm gonna leave you with something I've learned from this. Well, the first thing I did right was the day I started to fight. Keep your eyes on the prize and hold on, hold on. When we work together, we win. 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 We 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 work together, we we win. win. Amen. Thank you. Tasha Brown, please give it up for Tasha Brown. I need to hear somebody say, somebody say, pick a side. I need to say a lot and say, pick a side. Pick a side. Because we are out here today to deliver a message to President Biden. We're standing right outside what he might consider his house, but we know that it's our house, right? Whose house? Our house. Whose house? Our house. And so we are here today at our house to deliver a message that we need President Biden to pick a side. Because at the end of the day, you can't be on the side of both voting rights and on the side of the filibuster. You can't walk that line. You gotta pick a side. 
You can't in one sentence, in one passionate speech, tell us that, that we're facing the greatest attack against voting rights ever since the Civil War. But then in the next sentence, tell us, but I can't change the filibuster. You can't do that. You got to pick a side. And so we are out here today to deliver a message to the president. We need him to use everything that he's got at his disposal. All the power that he's got as the president. All the power, all the experience that he's got from over 40 years in the Senate. You can't tell me you got over 40 years of experience in the Senate, but then try to tell me you can't win one vote. So we need him to use all of that for the people and for the people act. And for the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. We need him to use everything that he's got. Now, oftentimes when I say this, people say, well, Cliff, what you, what you want him to do? Like, wait, he's not in the Senate. What you want him to do? Well, how about this? Because we know that the Senate just passed a bill, a big infrastructure bill. They're all excited about it, right? The, the moderates excited about it. The progressives excited. You even got some, some right-wing folks that are excited, even though they don't want to admit it. They're going to try to take credit for it, right? Everybody excited. Well, how about this? If the president said, I'm not going to sign that bill, until you pass the Voting Rights Act or until you pass the For the People Act. He's got that kind of leverage. But the question is, will he use the power that he has? And will he use the power that we gave him? The question is, will he pick a side? Will he value us? Will he put the same energy into our voting rights that he's been putting into, into, the, fill up, into, the, um, into the infrastructure and some of the other priorities? Now, don't get me wrong, infrastructure's nice. We need infrastructure, right? We need infrastructure in our communities. We need it in rural communities. We need it in urban communities. We need it in this country. But we also need our voting rights because at the end of the day, our voting rights is the infrastructure of this democracy. At the end of the day, our voting rights is the infrastructure that makes all of the rest of it possible. So we need him to pick a side. And we need him to pick a side now. The filibuster has got to go. In fact, <laughs> hey, 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 Joe. The filibuster has got to go. Hey, 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 Joe. The filibuster has got to go. Hey, 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 Joe. The filibuster has got to go. And so I'm going to leave y'all. I'm going to leave y'all with this because the other thing we're hearing, people talking about, well, you know, we don't think it's going to pass. It's dead. We don't, you know, the votes aren't there. It, it can't be done. But they're saying the same thing now about this voting rights bill that they were saying to some folks in Georgia. Anybody out here from Georgia? They're saying the same thing that they said just a few months ago when they said there's no way that you can win two Senate seats in the state of Georgia. There's no way you can win two Senate There's no way you can flip the presidency in the red state of Georgia. That can't happen. But we went out and we made history and we did the impossible. They told us when we went to Texas a few months ago and, and merged up with a whole bunch of great organizations in that Texas coalition, they said, you know, why y'all wasting your time going out there? There's no way you can stop that Texas bill. That Texas voter suppression bill is going to pass, it's going to pass easily. But we went out there and we joined forces with the coalition and they made history. They stopped that bill once, then the, then the Democrats left and they stopped it a second time. And I'm going to tell you this, I don't care what you're reading about what's going on in Texas and the quorum, they're going to stop it a third time. Because that's the business that we're in. We are in the business of taking that which everybody else says it's impossible, and we make it possible. That's the business that we are in. That is on our history shows us that when we work together, you heard my sister say it, when we work together, we win. When we work together, we win. When we work together, we win. Thank y'all.
We are DC. 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 Thank you for joining us here. This is such an important event. We are gathered here today to do what millions have done before across several generations, generations of our ancestors. We are here to literally speak truth to power. Literally speak truth to power. What is the truth? The truth is that the people of D.C. suffer under a potent form of voter suppression, one that we've suffered under for over 200 years. One that can only be fixed by D.C. becoming the 51st state Douglas Commonwealth. We're literally here to speak truth to power. What's the truth? The truth is that the people of D.C. call on President Biden to act now. Act now. Act now on his long support for D.C. statehood. You know, we ought to be ashamed that just a few steps from here, over a half a century ago, Dr. King told and showed us how to make real th those promises of democracy and how to make justice a reality. He reminded us that in his testament of hope speech that the luxury of leisurely approach to urgent solutions the ease of gradualism helps us to ignore and prolong issues that we know are unjust and issues that we know are inhumane. Issues like the 700,000 plus Washingtonians that don't have full voting rights in their own country. So yes, Mr. President, you are the most vocal president ever for DC statehood. But that's not enough. As my black mama says, don't talk, just do. Indeed, we again have the legacy of Dr. King, who said of steps from here that he was a creative extremist, who was not afraid of the KKK, was not afraid of the White Citizens Council, but was afraid of white, moderate, Moderate confused with an illusion of order over justice. Sounds like to me order and complacency and maintenance of the status quo are the same or perhaps are deformed triplets. Sounds like to me like my favorite television show, Law and Order, got the last part of their, part of their name wrong. It's not about law and order. It's about law and justice. We ask Mr. President to fight for us. We want you to go down in history as the president who finally ended, didn't just talk about, but ended 200 years of discrimination against the people of Washington, D.C. D.C. Vote, proud to represent D.C. Vote, which has been working for more than 20 years to advance equality for D.C. residents and for D.C. statehood. Equality for D.C. residents like me will only come with statehood. Every state admitted to the Union since the original 13 colonies has been admitted by a majority of U.S. Congress. All we need is the President to support H.R. 1, H.R. 4, and H.R. 51. Yeah. As a political scientist, I know that government is as good as the citizens like us who make it work and who participate in it. So be proud of ourselves for being here today, but we also have to show up tomorrow. We also have to show up this weekend. You also have to show up online. You also have to show up at the kitchen table, at the dinner table, with your friends, with your nieces, with your nephews, with your cousins, with your pastors with your same bigger loving friends. Everybody has to be on the same accord that justice denied is always justice delayed. 
I think this is an important event because statehood for every American citizen, statehood for all the people living in the nation's capital, is just one part of this democracy challenge that we face. It's important that we have to remember that one in four matter, but without 51, one in four don't have the same meaning because you can't leave out 700,000 people from democracy and cause democracy. It won't be. So it's not enough to just pass John Lewis Voting Rights Act. It's not enough to just pass the For the People Act. We have to pass the D.C. Admission Act, and we have to pass it today. And the only way we do that is by eliminating the filibuster. It's been crystal clear that we have to do that in order to win. And I study politics every day, and I can tell you this, something that you all know. Unless you win, there's nothing that we can work on in our interest. So you have to win first. And in order for us to win, the filibuster has got to go. So I'm going to leave you with one chance, again, in the spirit of Dr. King, who on a summer, hot August day, not so long ago, a few steps from here, reminded us why we gather. We gather because we want all of our rights. We want them here, and we want them now. Join me in echoing that refrain from Dr. King, I have a dream in 1963. Repeat it after me, we want all of our rights. We want them here. And we want them now. I hope you join DC Vote on the effort to support statehood by please pulling out your phone and texting 51st. 51ST to 52886. We need your help. We've been doing it for over 20 years, and we're going to be doing it until this place is called a state and this place is called Douglas Commonwealth. God bless Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Romel Sandino. I'm a senior organizer with Community Change and the Fair Immigration Reform Movement. Let me start with a chant. Tell me what democracy looks like. Tell me what democracy looks like. Tell me what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. I came to this country at the age of four in the arms of my mother when we crossed the border, the southern border. I used to be undocumented, a dreamer. Um, in 2011, I became a citizen. The first thing I did was vote at the lo in my local elections where I lived. I grew frustrated that there was decisions being made in my local city that impacted brown, black, and immigrant families without the voices of black, brown, and immigrant people. And that's what impulsed me to run, to run for local office. And I'm happy to tell you that this past June, I was sworn in in my local city as the first immigrant who used to be undocumented council member. And that's part of the story that when we vote, we win. When black people vote, we win. When brown people vote, we win. And when immigrant people vote, we win. Within FIRM, at the national level, FIRM represents 30 organ 40 organizations within 30 different states. And this year, I'm happy to share that we have gotten uh, the closest that we've ever gotten to win citizenship 
and dignity for immigrant families in this country. Immigrant people like the essential workers, family, students that have been at the front line uh, helping us keep this country running in the midst of this global pandemic. And it's our duty, our duty to make sure that every one of these people become new American citizens, new voters, just like the League of Women Voters, uh, help inform uh, and equip voters around 100 years ago. But we are not blind to the fact that as we get closer to winning citizenship for undocumented people in this country, there are forces doing everything in their power to suppress the vote of black, brown, and immigrant voters in this country. So that's why our call this afternoon is to urge President Biden to do everything in his power to pass the Voters' Rights Act and to pass it now. And I'm happy to share also this space with Megan. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Megan now. My name is Megan and I am here representing CASA. I am, from a Chic I am a Chicana from a small community in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Growing up, we didn't know that we had a right to vote or that we have the power to change policy. Our community takes care of one another, we thought. Politicians and policy makers don't care about us, we thought. Politicians listen to rich donors, not poor voters, or so we thought. But today, I am filled with gratitude to be able to say that each generation of my community was, has been afforded more opportunities than the former. During my degree, I learned that civic and electoral structures depoliticize communities of color intentionally. This happens with young people, people that are affected by poverty, descendants of immigrants like myself, and people that are disabled. These people are my community and systems of oppression such as, such as racism, sexism, ageism are written into our legislation, making voting more difficult and making it so that some people's vote count more than others. These systems silence our voices. Earning my degree taught me that voting is the most essential right. It is not a privilege afforded to a certain demographic, age bracket, neighborhood, or language. And if we care about our community, if we care about our future, if we care about our, our families, our health care, we must be guaranteed the equal right to vote. Right. Going through an election during a pandemic has made this even more apparent and undeniable how much we need voting reform now. On behalf of CASA, we demand comprehensive voting reform that must include the elimination of gerrymandering and restrict, restricting, redistricting, excuse me, that silences the diversity in urban cities. Thank you. We demand money out of politics, a cap on advertisements and donations to politicians. We demand complete eradication of voter suppression laws and disenfranchisement. We demand time off work for voting, especially for the essential worker. We demand facilitation of voting for single parents, people with disabilities, and marginalized communities. We demand translators for non-English speaking voters. We demand to be able to freely, safely, and equally vote. We will not lose our right to a voice in this country. No more excuses. Voting rights now. Arizona. The day that this brother showed up in the Arizona House of Representatives, he was the le Legislative Black Caucus. Because there's only one. There's only ever one. Sometimes there's two. Once they have three, but then there's always just one. Now he is the minority leader of the House of Representatives in the state of Arizona. And he is running for Secretary of State. I bring to you Brother Bolding from Arizona, Reginald Bolding. Hey! 
Say I. I. Say I believe. I believe. Say I believe that we will win. and recognized the buildings in the world. The White House, not only does this building symbolize hope, but it symbolizes democracy, it symbolizes a nation where we say in this country, your voice is your vote. And that vote is sacred. That vote is powerful. That vote we allow freedom to ring throughout the nation with that vote. But the reality is today that that vote in our democracy and the legitimacy of even having a building like this is in jeopardy. Legislatures across the country with no mixed words have said they don't believe that everyone should have the right to exercise their voice by exercising their vote. From Arizona to Texas, from Texas to Georgia, from Georgia to Florida, and everywhere in between. We know that power building organizations, lawmakers, voters, and communities, and a special shout out to the League of Women Voters from Arizona here, who are pushing our senators, have stood up to fight back. But the person we need more than anybody to stand up and fight back is President Joe Biden. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. President, you told us that this White House would fight tooth and nail for voting rights. Now is that time, no longer can we wait. We must pass federal voting rights legislation today. We want both the John Lewis Voting Rights Act and the For the People Act passed today. And I know that when we move and when we work together, we will win. Say I. I. Say I believe. I believe. I believe that we will win. I believe that we will win. Let's fight and let's pass federal legislation now. Thank you.
blocking voting rights bills and state legislatures making it harder to vote. And rather than add to our own chapter of the story, freedom, our country seems to be going backwards to a less perfect union. There are two paths forward. One is the path we are currently on, where government by the people is becoming more and more limited, and more barriers to voting are created. Where a parliamentary maneuver created to block anti-lynching legislation and protect Jim Crow laws is allowed to block the For the People Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. The other path would be a new chapter in our country's unfolding story of freedom. A chapter dedicated to the restoration of the Voting Rights Act and solutions that guarantee our government is truly for the people. Here we are calling on President Biden to ensure that we go forward, if not backwards, in our work for a more perfect union. That we take the path towards restoration and not the path towards Jim Crow. President Biden, please help us go forward and urge the Senate to pass the Fourth People Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act and bring it to your desk. Now it's my honor to bring up our last speaker, powerful voice from the Deep South, Gary Chambers, founder and president of Bigger Than Me. Gary? You know, far too often, history has required that people stand up and demand that justice and equity exist for us all. It is amazing to me that a president who got more votes than any other president in the U.S. history to be elected can't flip one vote in the U.S. Senate. If you can commit, convince 80 million people to vote for you, Joe, surely you can convince Senator Manchin and Senator to do their job in the U.S. Senate and expand and protect voting rights. That if we are going to have a democracy for all people, that your words where you said that we are in a moment where the very right to vote is under attack and your job is to help protect it. 36 years old is how old I am. That's how many years you served in the U.S. Senate. So if it is that you have three decades of experience in the Senate, don't tell me that you can't flip a vote, Joe. If we have come this far, I want you to understand one thing, that there's a generation waking up and they'll stand at your door too and they'll demand more of you. And you can't tell us that you're with us, you're gonna have to show us that you're with us by what you do with the power that you have. Woo, woo, that's right. I am from a state that ranks 50th in the nation. So when I come here, the burden of coming 1,100 miles to speak for people who cannot often afford to come be heard outside the White House, who are too busy trying to get people in state legislatures to do right by them in a state that is 34% black, where we are underrepresented in our legislature and in the U.S. Congress. And Mr. President, you have the power to do something about it. If we build a more just and a more inclusive democracy, then the people who come to D.C. to speak for us and represent us will look like us, rather than look like what it has looked like for 400 years. Where I'm from, we make gumbo and we talk loud and we dance and we make noise but we fight for change, and we believe that America is only as good as its people. And while you stay, sit in the people's house, it is your job and your duty to honor the people who put you there. If you got 80 million votes, Joe, go ahead and flip the last two. Hey, 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 Joe. The filibuster has got to go. Hey, hey. Hey, Joe. The filibuster has got to go. Hey, hey. Hey, Joe. The filibuster has got to go. Sisters and brothers, those here and those gathered online watching right now, it is time for us to take this to the next level. We have had months of protests at the Congress. It is time for the President of these United States to understand 
that his voice matters more than any in this moment. It is time for President Joe Biden to call on the Senate to remove the filibuster as an obstacle and pass the bill of rights. Yeah, pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Restoration Act. To get on with making Washington be a And so, brothers and sisters, I want to call over here Dr. Deborah Turner from the League of Women Voters, Charlie Carter from the Democracy Initiative. All right! Jenna Morgan from DFAT, Declaration for American Democracy. America. Christian Union, President of the National Organization of Women. Christian Union, Reginald Bolden, the Minority Leader of the Arizona House of Representatives. Gary Chambers from Baton Rouge and Bigger Than Me. Reverend Melvin Wilson. Pastor, St. Matthew AME Church, Reverend Wendy Hamilton, from Metropolitan Community Church of D.C., Canada, Natasha Brown and Cliff Albright, co-founders of Black Voters Matter, Rabbi Jonah Pesner, the president of the of the Religious Action Center of Reform Judaism, the rack is where the Voting Rights Act was written. People for the American way. It's an honor to be joined by Rabbi Pesci. Each of those folks has agreed today to commit an act of civil disobedience to begin what will be escalating civil disobedience here at the White House until President Joe Biden calls on the Senate to restore the Voting Rights Act to stop the corruption in Georgia and Texas and Arizona to pass the for the People Act to pass the John Lewis bill and to no eliminate the filibuster as an obstacle. Right now. Time to go. And the more than 400,000 who signed the Thank you. Let's take it to the next level, y'all. The White House knows what this is about. This is a moment when this movement is escalating because we have pleaded, we have asked politely and we've received no joy as we've lost voting rights bills introduced in across the country. We go down and voter suppression bills introduced in states across the country and passed. We now see Arizona and Texas and Georgia giving corrupt politicians the ability to overturn the people. The people didn't give the politicians that power, the politicians gave themselves that power.
expedient campaign, you do so knowing that you may have to escalate. We at People for the American Way were founded 40 years ago to escalate the cause of building a better, more inclusive democracy. We aren't going anywhere. We will be back. We will be back. We will be back. We will be back. And let me say something that Virginia can't say herself, which is that the League of Women Voters, the League of Women Voters is a pillar of American democracy. job 
up and pass the bill. Woo! And remove the filibuster as an obstacle. We will, Joe Biden, we voted for you, most of us. I think maybe all of us. But we will not accept, not any of us, you being a moderate who does nothing when it comes to voting rights. Talk is cheap, Mr. President, unless it's directed at the U.S. Senate to tell them to do their job and remove the filibuster and pass the damn bill. Please do not be the moderate that Dr. King loathes. 